I hope I'm audible to everyone. So, um, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Let's start from the place where we have left last time. Let me briefly review what has been going through in the last class. In the last class, we're discussing about Firstly, we were talking about method of weighted residuals. In the method of weighted residuals, what we need to do is take an approximation and u tilde is an approximation and we take governing differential equation for example we looked at d square u by dx square plus u is equals to zero with the boundary conditions u of 0 is equals to 0, u dash of 1 is equals to 1. Okay, let me just restart it. Okay, so in the method of weighted residuals, the residue is defined as the residue is defined as d square u tilde dx square plus u. Now we want to integrate over the domain with some weight this residue has to be equals to zero. This is simply the method of weighted depending upon your approximation where we choose approximation to be a polynomial approximation and it has to satisfy boundary conditions then your u tilde was something like and after you have the form of u tilde then you substitute in your r and then what we say is there are two several different method in the point collocation method w of x is nothing but delta x minus xi is equals to z to zero. This, that was the point collocation method. For the second one, least square minimization wi of x is defined as to r by do a i is defined as that and then you integrate over the entire thing 
then the Galerkin method in the Galerkin method View your weight, and finally, for the method of moments, wi of x is nothing but on these, we know our weights. And we know our residue, we integrate it, we get few sets of conditions. The number of conditions is equals to number of unknowns in the u tilde. For our approximation, the number of unknowns was only 1 after the substitution of boundary condition. But if you take a higher approximation, your, your uh, AIs will be more A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A, some other things will be there. So based on that, you have to seek for more conditions. And you solve for that conditions after integrating, you will get your A1 and A2. That is how you have approximated the solution. This is not an exact solution. It, an, it is an approximation. And these approximations will be sometimes close, sometimes far. And that we will see that. With, with the increase in the approximations, one can make your uh, approximation closer to the exact solution. Anyway, that is the, one of the traditional thing. The second thing we learned about in the previous class is nothing but variational principles. So what I will do today is I will try to go a little bit slow because in the last class some people found it a little bit difficult. So I will try to emphasize this thing a little bit more. Before that I want to talk about, I re, re, review it, something called, called about stationary condition. Stationary condition is also known as, will give us something called as, will implies, it will give a maxima or a minima. So if I take some curve, These things are maximas. Some are local one is local minima minima. So wherever a maxima or a minima occurs, we know that if this function is this function is f, then we know that this is tangent. So at maxima, this is a local max. This is this may be a global max, but we don't differentiate between a global and a local max local max local max this is local minima local minima and uh, this can be a global minima So anyway, we see that no matter at maxima or a minima,
factor okay a tangent is uh, it is this since it represents the tangent at a maxima and minima the condition what we get is df by dx the tangent is makes zero degrees with the horizontal at smaller theta tan theta is equals to theta so we can directly write df by dx is equals to zero so so that means that this is for to be an a potential to be a maxima or minima the tangent has to be condition but one has to understand that what we have learned so far this is single variable calculus or this is this is single even if it is multivariable there is no difference you will have multiple direction is a surface instead of a curve but this is different from variational calculus in the variational calculus in the single in the in normal calculus dx is the increment for the increment in dx what is the increment in df right these are called increments however now what we are studying is variational calculus this is different from variable calculus okay in variational calculus we don't deal with just dx which are increments but we also deal with variation so we call the variation by a delta function delta f or delta i and so on like that right for a change in delta u right if these are independent then what is the variation in the dependent things and variational calculus is about let's say if if is a function of f can be function of another functions so on like that so f is not a function it is function of functions so because u is a function of x this is a function of x and this is your independent f is a function of another functions so f is called functional it is not function it is functional so if you are making a variation in your one of the function what is the change in this another function f is nothing but okay so now let us see let us if i define my i as an a functional integrand which is integrated from a to b f of x u comma u dash x is defined as your some integrand uh, uh, some potential function and you need to seek the stationary value of i that will come when delta i equals to 0 so you can write delta i equals to 0 but you know want to write your delta i equals to 0 in terms of what is the delta f's okay so this is little bit tricky so what we have used is we used integration by parts
So, even before, first I will explain the integration of parts and then I will write my delta F and then I will use the things. First, let me show what is the integration by parts. The integration by parts is V du integral is equals to uv, let's say a to b, a to p minus of integral u dv. This is the integration by parts. Now let me write my delta i in terms of delta f. So my delta i is nothing but integral of delta f dx. Now what is my delta f? Since f is a functional, you can write this one as dou f with a change in u for a given variation in u plus change in f with the change in u dash for a given u dash will be your will be your uh, uh, variation in the delta f okay so just follow it closely you will understand why i am doing all these things now let me write it integral so delta i is equals to integral of delta f dx can be written as integral of dou f by dou u delta u plus dou f by dou u dash delta u dash dx. Now why I will be using integration by parts is I want to remove for any given variation in delta u. I want to write this integral such that I can remove delta u common from these two terms. In this term I can remove it easily but this term it is not that easier to remove it. So then I am looking for a condition where I can convert this delta u dash in terms of writing it in terms of delta u. For that what I will do is so if I consider u dash as du and this fellow as v then using this integral by parts I can write it in terms of this thing for the second term. So let me invoke it and rewrite it. A to B minus of D by DX of to Now you can see that in this term I can have delta U common, I have delta U common by writing this. What I have defined is my u is nothing but delta u or you can write it, it's that's the thing and v do f by to u dash and your du is taken as delta u dash. So if this, if you assume it in the integration by parts and then substitute in this, then I can write it in this form. 
and when I write it in this form and after simplification I can show that integral a to b dou f dou u minus d by dx of dou f by dou u dash and which is integrated with respect to dx and both the things has a variation delta u plus some boundary terms which is defined as dou f by dou u dash delta u a to b. Now here I want to do this, if you mention this, this will go to zero, this term will, this delta u goes to zero if essential boundary conditions are specified. And this fellow need not has to go zero, is, is specified. If it is specified, then it need not be equals to zero. Then this is called natural boundary conditions or force boundary conditions. Essential boundary conditions are also known as displacement boundary conditions. So, checked in the previous class, when essential displacement boundary conditions are A and B, there are multiple paths where you can go but all the paths, if has to start same point to the same point, then delta u is equals to zero at x is equals to a and x is equals to b, right? So this fellow is, that's the reason the variation will be zero if essential boundary conditions are mentioned. Otherwise, if a natural boundary conditions are mentioned, and this will stand outside. So now what we have done is everything, entire thing, we are making it to the zero, okay, provided we have a common term delta u in all the things that is there. So that means even though I have delta u, delta u dash and other things, I am bringing it to the common delta u. Now, by making this, I can tell that I don't want to give the theorem, but if 0 is equals to delta i, then only this integrand, this fellow has to go to 0. Whereas if it is in this form, I could not have told you how this term goes to 0. I cannot directly say that this term is equals to 0. However, if, if I write it, because here I have delta u and delta u dash, which was difficult to tell. However, if it is in this form, I can clearly say that when you are integrating with respect to any given variable, the equivalence of delta delta i equals to 0 implies dou f by dou u dou f by dou u dash equals to so for no matter what the delta, what variation you have. So any of this helps Euler, Lagrange, So I know the derivation looks difficult, but I would urge you to just pay attention to this term. It's okay if you cannot derive it, if you don't understand uh, how the derivation has happened, but don't forget this EL condition. If somebody gives you an I, which is of 
then ask them to ask you to find the equilibrium condition or a stationary condition for that then you just substitute this f and do it this kind of partial differentiation and the, these things then you will end up with your equilibrium conditions or stationary conditions for that i will try to make use of a bar example So, anyway, even before I do the bar example, first example I will do again, I think it is from the previous class. We have seen that if I have a spring which is k and it is displaced by an x amount by a force. internal energy of the system is given by half into kx into x that is equals to one half kx square the external or the work done on the system is given by p into x the total potential i or you can call it as pi whichever you want to is nothing but two plus v that is equals to one half kx square minus px now you want a stationary condition with respect to x here it is not of an integral form the next, next example what i will give is of the integral form and there i will make use of the euler lagrange conditions so di by dx is sufficient because there is no u this only is the u i can directly equals to zero implies x square and I differentiate it will become 2 so 2 to goes of minus p equals to 0 so kx is equals to p is my equilibrium condition looking at the spring anybody can tell that for the equilibrium condition the external force is equals to k times the displacement so this was much easier example so but now let's start learning about a much more continuous media like a bar for the bar Let's say all amount of body force is there present in the system all P and uh, let's say it is E and A is the actual rigidity now or you can the best example I can give is you can as well as consider a vertical bar your self weight will be acting downwards right this can also be a better example or you can as well as have an equivalent system I am writing it in the but in the horizontal form with the body force P acting in this direction okay so now my uh, strain in this bar is given by du by dx and my stress is given by e times du by dx now if I want to find out my internal energy internal or stored energy is nothing but strain energy the strain energy is integral of sigma into d epsilon right you can write it in this integrated over the volume dv 
So, this is for the DO. Okay. If you want, this is the change in the internal energy. If you want U, then you can write it as integral of. Now, this can be also written as. integration over the, uh, the and integration over the the strain level 0 to strain level e times epsilon d epsilon d then this is u u e square by 2 and then epsilon square by 2 dv the volume can be split into da into dx because volume is equals to da times dx let's assume our cross section is constant then i can replace this fellow as integral 0 to length e epsilon into f so a will not it when i integrate it it's just an a and dx now that is nothing but a e i will take it outside e into epsilon gives you sigma epsilon one half zero to l dx that's a simple thing where we can write it so let me let me make use of that and write this fellow directly my strain energy is given by zero to l a e by two sigma dot epsilon dx but what is epsilon or you can you can write it in multiple ways we know that our epsilon it can also be written as a e by 2 0 to l epsilon is du by dx so du by dx whole square dx okay so I can as well as write this one as a e by 2 integral 0 to L du by dx whole square dx is my internal energy or strain energy. Now force has done some work on the system that is nothing but along the length okay so dx is been acting so this is the force into the displacement this this is the only force so force at every and the displacement u and like that everything is acting at along all along the length so this is your thing so again your potential pi or whatever you want to can be written as and with the negative signs this is the work done u plus v is equals to integral of let me call this entire fellow as b by 2 well i can name it as today in the last class I have given something an expression of v by 2 d square u by dx square so just for naming purposes I am just naming this I am replacing two product of two constant by another constant so in the last example I have given you the same thing so I am rewriting again v by 2 du by dx square dx 
minus integral of p u dx 0 to l. Now if I look at it, I want to rewrite yes so I want to rewrite it as v by 2 du by dx whole square minus p of u dx 0 to l. Now if I look at it this I want to substitute as 0 to L some function f which is a function of x u and du now let's go back and check Let's check if we have a function i, functional i, potential functional i, such that it is of this form, the stationary condition is obtained if it satisfies Euler-Lagrange equation, right? This is our condition. So what is Euler-Lagrange condition? Do f by do u minus d by dx, do f by do u dash d, d by dx is equals to zero. That is as simple as that. So all to do now is the second example what we are looking for the the bar we have written energy total potential energy available which is I but out of this total potential energy we want to see that for what values of this displacement the system is under equilibrium. So that means for what values of this, the I, the potential energy, the total available potential energy would seek a stationary value. So what we are doing is, if I want an equilibrium condition for this bar, I want delta I to be zero. That implies if it is of this form, it has to satisfy EL condition. And we already know F in this case. So our f, is, let me write it simply, u dash whole square minus p of u. Now let me substitute what is do f by do u. Do f by do u is minus p. Is this is 2, 2 gets cancelled, u dash remains, so it is v u dash. Now, let me see the, the thing. If I substitute my Euler Lagrange equation as 2f by do u minus of d by dx do f by do u dash equals to 0 means minus p minus d by d u dash equals to 0 which is nothing but I can rewrite it as d by dx square u b is nothing but a e plus P equals to 0. If you look back, this is the equilibrium condition. 
if you recall i have derived the same equation some time back when i am giving you equilibrium so let us go back and check in what thing we have done that so let me see that in the lecture 3 i think i have derived is it lecture 3 not lecture 3 i think in the lecture 4 i have derived for the equilibrium condition so which is which falled out to be the same thing so i took a e outside this is the equilibrium condition the same equilibrium condition the same equilibrium condition i obtained it where is that which i have derived in a different fashion in in a previous class i obtained same set of equilibrium condition by bar using the variational principle this is the beauty so what we have shown here is if you have a potential and if you are seeking for a stationary condition the stationary condition will give you the equilibrium condition and using the potential uh, the energy and i what i derived directly as an equilibrium condition has been rederived through the variational principle so at this point of time i will take a uh, break and i will ask if you have any questions given you a potential form i which is of f x comma u comma u dash dx and ask for a stationary condition all you need to use is euler lagrange condition so through variational principles also you can calculate your stationary condition stationary condition is nothing but is also known as equilibrium condition so with this the first chapter with a one dimensional example um is kind of uh, over so from now uh, i what i will do is i will switch gears and go to the second chapter so in this chapter today what we deal uh, with is uh, mostly the element library okay so today i would cover element library so let's start with a one dimensional library so 1d 1d library the 1d library the first one i have is a bar element in a bar element again it can be classified into two noded element a two noded element is nothing but a node and another node so this is node a node b okay and this is element e so now in this case i just want to uh, uh, 
okay let me just take a bar example so if i take a bar this bar can be approximated as a mathematical model into let's say this is the units so i am making a unit of 1 1 1 this is element 1 element 2 and element 3 so this is node 1 this is node 2 node 3 and node 4 so if I zoom this if I zoom any of this element then I get this node is nothing but my node A and this node is nothing but my node B and this element is element E. So this is one noded element. This is it for example. Okay. The same thing you can construct using um, three noded element. This is second one. So this is approximated as So this can be 1.5, this length is 1.5 and this is the thing and from here to here is a single element 1 and these nodes are node 1, node 2, node 3. Now we need to understand the difference between this one noded element, uh, two noded and what I will do is first I will try to elaborate and then in a later classes maybe at the later point of time I will go through the the 2D and 3D libraries or maybe you at the end of today's class. So let us see a simple a zoom up. Let me see if I have got some questions. A three noded element with nodes A B and C. This is element E. This is a three noded element and the other one is a two noded element. Let's see the differences. Again, first one two noded element. So if I consider a two noded element with n nodes A and B, so now I want to write an approximation U tilde for this. The approximation U tilde for this can be written as A naught plus A1x while for a three noded element a 
have A, B and C, then my approximation for a 3 noded element would be, how many unknowns are there? The unknown is 1, 2. However, here the unknowns are 1, 2 and 3. So, I have freedom to choose 3 unknown coefficients. Why not I am taking A3? Because I have only 1, 2, 3. 3 nodes. So, 1, 2, 3 coefficients. Here, 1 and 2. So, 2 unknown coefficients. Why these are unknown? I am assuming that the variation is of this fashion, but I don't know what is A0 and A1. It's like if you look at you and your friend who is sitting next to you, we both are humans or maybe we all are humans. Why? Because we have hands, one tongue, one mouth, maybe two years, it's we are human, that is template. But what is the size of your eye compared to your friend's eye? Maybe it is different. The length of you compared to your friend, it may be different. So the template is same, but we don't know what is the actual numbers of the things. So that is what is called, that's the reason we, we would only know the actual numbers once we solve it. So that's the reason I have to call it as unknown coefficient, similarly here. So, this into several nodes. 1, 2. So, if I use two noded element, the two noded element would be, this is one two noded element. This is another two noted element, another two noded 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 element. But if I choose a three noded element, I can construct the entire beam as one three noded element, another three noded element, another three noded element, and another three noded element. So for a three noded element, I have four elements. Two noded elements, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are two noded elements. These are three noded elements. So the same bar, if I approximate it, this is one approximation, this is another approximation. I can approximate it as a two noded using eight elements, or I can approximate the same bar using four three noded element. Then we want to see that how does each one differ from one another. Since we don't know what is your actual displacement at these points, that's the reason we call those coefficients as unknowns. Okay. Now let me go back and come from here. Now if I go here and This is for this one, two noded, 
and this is for the three nodded which is u tilde is equal to x plus j to x square now you need to see that in this every black color line is one element whereas two black color elements would form only one single noded three noded element actually it, it, it doesn't doesn't mean that two noded uh, two single two noded element forms one but in this from here to here it is one element that that is what comprises of two of such two noded element so each formulation is different now let's once you are writing in this manner you should have got question that why i am taking an approximation of this form why not i write it as a not x to the power of 10 plus i can as well as take it like this why not like this or why not is 10 and 20 a fancy number can't i take x to the power of 5 plus sorry x to the power of 7 is this valid is this valid i will let you think about it so similarly why we have to take it like this can't i take here as a1 x to the power of 7 plus a1 x to the power of 8 plus a2 x to the power of 20 is this valid or a naught x phi a1 x7 plus a2 x10 is this good or is this valid you think about it but i would say at this point of time i would only use this because this is the best one why it is best one we'll 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 try to discuss about it at a later point of time when we are talking about convergence and completeness so this is a hint i have already given you a hint that but for now i will not argue with you or i will not pose you uh, anything else but you ponder over it and be prepared when i will teach you about convergence we will see is this a best option or that option for now i will take u tilde for this one as a naught plus a one x and u tilde is a naught plus a one x plus a two x square. Now, even though this has been written in this form, how I don't like to see it in this thing. I will write it in a vectorized form. The alternate way of writing it is: this is the basis. And these are the unknown coefficients. So this is like a row vector. This is a column vector. Row into column will give you this addition. Here it is 1, x, x square, a naught, a1, a2. Now, let's say everyone has set of close friends. So, I think you also have some set of close friends. So, every time you want to call your friend, do you dial his number? No, right? We generally put them on the speed dial, right? Why you put them on the speed dial? Because you call them so frequently. So similarly, I don't like this form, but I want to write the same things in terms of some meaningful and in some something first thing is something meaningful at the same time, something similar to the speed dial. That is, here my a naught and a one are in here, a naught, a one, a two. These things doesn't. any 
physical significance so if it is not having any physical significance i want to rewrite this fellow as u tilde as which is a not plus a1 x as something different as u1 or u a n a plus u b n b similarly here u tilde which is written as a not plus a1 x plus a2 x square as u a n a plus u b n b plus u c n c what is u a u b u c or here u a u b these are nothing but when we drawn a bar let's say the displacement at this is u a and the displacement at this is u b similarly in, in a three nodded element let's say this is u a this is u b and this is u c now anyway I, i said i will not tell again but i am still telling you the reason for why choosing like this if you know two points this point and this point what is the unique curve that you can fit no matter i give it to you or your friend or someone else the unique curve if you know two points data e is a two points unique curve is a straight line so if you look at it the equation of a straight line is given by a not plus a1 x similarly if you look at it this is a curve a unique curve would be that means i no matter i give it to anyone they should come up with the given u a u b u c they have to come up with the same thing then if it is three points it is quadratic curve that means second order curve so this is x to the power of 0 x to the power of 1 x to the power of 2 at most it is quadratic in nature okay that is good so that is one reason there are other reasons why it has to be of that form which we'll again discuss at a later point of time now this has being said when i can generalize it if i have n points then i can fit n minus 1 degree polynomial for those points that's a generalization now let's coming come back to where we have left so now i don't like to write u tilde as a not plus a when x even though it is uh, is the same it's the best form best polynomial but i want to write it in terms of something physical so it is like i don't like to have a not a and a1 but the same form i'm not changing it's like the same person but in a different let's say if you have today one hairstyle and tomorrow different hairstyle person doesn't change it's the same thing so i want to represent the same person but in a different form 
okay so i i still want to represent u tilde as the same polynomial but in terms of something as u1 u a n a plus u b n b where u a u b is nothing but the displacements at the nodes so from the above what we can say is u tilde at x a is equals to or i can simply write x a as 0 so let me call it as a and b x is measured from here this is 0 and the length is l e length of the element u of 0 is equals to to a naught but at u of 0 the displacement here is u a similarly the displacement at length of the element is given as a naught plus a1 le is equals to at length the displacement here this is ub so now what i want to do is i want to write a1 i, I want to eliminate a not a1 and rewrite in terms of u and ub using this set of equations so ua is equals to a not or a not is equals to ua this is pretty simple and ub minus ua divided by le so i substitute back this i'll rewrite it anyway i'll rewrite it in this manner equals to a naught plus a one x but what is a a naught it is u a and a one is u b minus u a divided by l a to x so but i am not yet done i want to segregate the things so i want to write u a 1 minus x y l e plus u b x by l e so that means earlier i was mentioning that i want to write it in terms of this form so automatically my n a i can if i define my n a as 1 minus x by l e and e then i am writing my u tilde which is same as this fellow same as u a n a plus u b n b provided if I define my A and B as these things okay so now what the, here my A naught if you look at it these two are arbitrary coefficients and meaningless however U A U B are also arbitrary but they have a meaning what are what is that meaning it is the displacement at the ends of the nodes or it's the displacement of the end nodes a is the node as the left hand node b is the right hand node 
and UA is the displacement at the left end node and UB is the displacement at the right end node. So, in a different sense. Now, writing like this every time is a tedious task. So, what I will give you is, I will give you a shortcut method how to deal with it. So, that shortcut method is like this. Let me again digress and tell you something. Let's say if your parents or mother or a father ask you to go to a nearby shop and bring some uh, maybe like a milk and a curd. Let's say the milk would cost 10 rupees and the curd would cost you 7 rupees. Right? So let's say NA is cost of milk and NB is cost of curd. Now your mother asks you to bring UA units of milk and UB units of curd packets. So what do you see? Your NA and NB is nothing but cost functions or they are also called as shape functions. So let me define it. NA and NB are like cost functions and they are decided based on the shape so they are also called as shape functions. So let me do it again in a graphical sense. So if I take this thing if I am purchasing it by one unit or if I displace my node A by one unit, my entire structure would displace in this manner. So this is my NA of X or also known as 1 minus X by LE. The same equation, it's a straight line. Similarly, if I take the same thing, If I displace this, and this is my NB of X, and its equation is given by X by LE. So you can just see this. This distance is L, and this this height is one. So when N of B is one. So, when X is LE, then you can uh, you see that your this value NB of X should become 1. So, you put LE here, LE by LE, it will become 1. That's what is this. This is very simpler to do, but this is the NA is in the negative slope. You can also figure it out that at this point it should be 1 means for X is equals to 0, this should vanish and that 1 will remain. The cost function is in a manner that you draw any curve that has a unit placement at that given function and, and at all other things it should pass through the zero. So let me do it for a three noded element. For a three noded element, your NA this is the unit, it should pass through this, it should pass through this, and it should better be a quadratic curve. So this is your NB of X is at this place it is unit and it should pass through 0 of this one and should pass 0 of this one. 
So automatically it will be this kind of a quadratic function, the shape function for that. Now similarly, nc of x is, this should be a unit and it should be 0 at these two points. So, this kind of a quadratic thing, I am not drawing it properly because I am very poor in handling this pen device, but I think you got it to my point. So, this is point A, this is point B and this is point C. So, these are the shape functions. The equations of this in plus math. So, for that, what I will ask just a minute, Lagrange. So let me define as my ni of x is nothing but, before that let me just help you with something which is a high school uh, calculus. So if you have x square minus 3x plus 2 is equals to 0, if I ask you to find the zeros of this function you will say that this fellow is 0 when x minus 1 and x minus 2 is equals to 0 or at x is equals to 1 it is 0 and x is equals to 2 this is 0. That was simple thing because you might have learned it in your intermediate. So if you look at this function, any of these things, these functions except at the value where you are evaluating uh, except at the c this c at the same c it would be 1 but all at all other places it is this function is a 0 that means at those point that means at those points this function is going to 0 means x minus that position should be a root of its polynomial so then i can define my lagrange polynomial as ni of x is equals to product of x minus xi sorry x minus xj let me put it as j this is a product of j j not equals to i now this will not give you a unit value. So what I will do is, I will divide it by x i minus Now if I put j is equals to i, then what happens is, it will be give me 0 by 0 form, which I don't want it. Anyway, it you may feel like this is what very complicated form. I will give you a simple example at n a of x is nothing but x minus x b x minus x c divided by x a. This is i, this is same minus x b x a minus x sorry see so same these two are same this this is a product if i'm the top one numerator okay similarly the denominator should also on the second term should not have x a but the first 
system on the denominator everything should be that's what i have done it so by this when i substitute this fellow when x is equals to x a this will become x a this will become x a and this gets cancelled this gets cancelled this gets cancelled this gets cancelled it is one so n of a x a is coming to be one this is what we also require and at all other places it is it is it is passing through that function it's a zero means it's a product so that's the reason we define of x is equals to x minus x b x minus x c divided by x minus x b x a minus x c so let let us say we have at regular intervals let's this be 0 to be 0.5 this be 1 for simplicity sake so then i can write this one as x minus 0.5 sorry x minus 1 this is a c this is b x minus 0.5 divided by x a is 0 0 minus 1 0 minus 0.5 that will automatically give you your n a or n a of x is equals to x into x minus 0.5 divided by 0.5 right so this is the simplest way to derive in this manner or if i can apply the same thing here for the two noded element for the two noded element n a is equals to x minus x b x a minus x b so this is zero this is l e so that means this is equals to x minus l e divided by zero minus l e that is equal to one minus x by l e this is what we have derived earlier also by doing comparison similarly let me write n b which is x minus x a divided by x b minus x a i can show that my n b is equals to x minus 0 divided by l e minus 0 that is equals to x by l e so if you look at it earlier also i have derived in a different manner x by l e as n b and 1 minus x by l e in a different fashion and here we come out to be n a and n b to be of the same thing using lagrange polynomial these are called lagrange polynomial if you have This is I have shown for two noded element and three noded and n noded element using this as your shape functions. Now, if you have this as your shape functions, you can clearly write your u i u is equals to u a n a plus u b n b plus u c n c. What's are there? You can sum it up. An easiest fashion is u i. number of nodes on the element at this point of time i will break and ask for few questions from your side